Welcome to another episode of Launch Your Private Podcast. Today we have the incredible Barbie Honeycutt in the spotlight. Barbie straddles the world of online business and academia. And for those of you who know my background, you'll see exactly why I love her. She's a teaching and learning consultant, an author, a dynamic speaker, and the brilliant mind behind the Lecture Breakers podcast. With a mission to revolutionize education, she inspires educators to break free from traditional lectures and craft experiences that truly engage students and elevate learning. And of course, that's where private podcasts come in. In today's episode, we learn about how she's using Hello Audio to explore three compelling ways she's transformed teaching and training experiences using private podcasts. From breaking down complex information to providing a flexible learning experience, Barbie's insights and success stories will definitely inspire anyone looking to incorporate audio in their business, whether they're an academic or an online business owner. I really think you're going to enjoy this one. So let's get started. We are back with another case study episode. Today we have Barbie Honeycutt. I'm super excited about it. Nora won't get to nerd out maybe as much as me. (laughs) Well, a little bit. (laughs) I'm excited because Barbie comes from academia. So those of you who know me, Um, And the previous business I had, I was obviously focused on course creation, but I also was focused on academics who were also doing things differently, whether they had left, um, you know, academia or not. So I was somebody who chose to leave. Barbie is still in academia and she's actually training educators and professors. Now, the cool thing is when I changed everything in my business and became a SaaS business owner, people like Barbie, a lot of other academics were like, I could totally see this use case in education. Now, Hello Audio isn't necessarily built directly for education. We've always had it in the back of my mind, especially with Derek and I both being ex-professors. So when we in the early days had lifetime license users sign up for it, people who were doing lectures and stuff like that, I was excited because I could totally see some sort of podcast hosting, private podcast hosting in the college space. I personally, Nora and I, as we looked at our business and what it was set up. We didn't really want to go into education directly because it's a different ball game, but we love that professors are out there using it independently. And who knows, maybe in five or 10 years, we'll be all over college. But Barbie, I'm so glad you're here. I think this episode is going to be really interesting for folks who maybe see themselves not in some of the same usual kind of conversations we have about launching and all this stuff, you're serving a different audience. And so I just know that this is really going to inspire folks who are in professional spaces to add private podcasting. So we're super glad you're here. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Nora. I am so excited to be here. And I'm an interesting case because I'm not teaching actively as a professor in higher ed, but I serve that audience. So I I have one foot in higher ed and one foot in business. So I don't know what you call that. (laughs) Perfect. I love it. Yeah, right. It's becoming more popular. That's definitely sure. And I think it is really cool with the tools that we have that we can teaching and and academia isn't just supposed to be, I don't think, in the classroom. And of course, there is serving the professors, but then there's also, yeah, running businesses outside of it. Like, why the heck not? I love it. Absolutely. Well, and that's kind of what I wanted to bring to the conversation today, because I am using Hello Audio in three different ways. And yes, I want to position it within how I'm doing it to serve professors, but there are so many takeaways Mm. to other business models that I think would be helpful for your audience, which is why I really wanted a chance to talk with you and come on the show and talk about the transformative power of what Hello Audio is giving me the opportunity to do. So just thank you so much for this opportunity. Yeah, no, we're excited. I mean, you get, you're you coming with the knowledge. We're just here to listen and take it in. So yeah, we typically kind of start talking about how you came across private podcasting. Like when you were like, yes, I absolutely see how I can use this in my current business or in the educational field. If you can kind of take us back to that moment or that time. Okay. Yeah. Well, first of all, let me say that I started my audio journey with a public podcast and I still have it. It's active. It's called Lecture Breakers. And that's where I kind of started dipping my toes into the water of being just an audio platform. And that has been fun. It's been well well received. I've grown my audience, all these things. And I actually spun that into a virtual conference, which is where Hello Audio stepped in and came a, a resource for me. And now I'm expanding that to audio courses and other things. So for me, part of this was following you, Lindsay, and seeing the things you were up to. But I know that's not what we want to talk about. I know we want to take it from the other side, which is, so in education, when we're, I just put on my education hat for just a moment, 
When we talk about teaching and learning and reaching our students, whoever your students or your learners are, there's two schools of thought that kind of have come together for me that have made audio the thing that I want to do. One is coming from what's called a universal design for learning. And that's all the different ways that people take in information and learn and then demonstrate what they know. And that whole, that whole theory, that whole framework is taking higher ed by storm over the last four years. And so I started looking at my content and I was saying, okay, well, I have video. That's one way to consume content or engage with it. Every video has a transcript so you can read it, so you can watch it and you can read it. Now I'm missing something. What if now I need some audio? I started to just play around with what would happen if I simply started to describe what was on my slides or I talked through it instead of saying, here's the visual, look at it. And there was a person, Tom Tobin, he talked me through the idea of talking through your slides and describing what was on them. And it's very hard to do. But once you learn how, oh my goodness, it's like the audio just explodes. It's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing that I can bring this to life in audio format. The other school of thought that was coming into my world at that time is something called embodied learning. And this is by Susan Rock. And she is a professor who has done all this research on this whole idea of your learning experience being holistic. So can you put your learner in the space where the learning should be happening? Why are we in an artificial environment like a classroom when we could be out on the farm or in the field or in the lab learning this thing? And I was like, oh, I think I've just found, like, if I put these two worlds together, and this is very academic, I know, but if I put these two worlds together and I put this into an audio format, not only am I reaching people where they are in terms of physically, right, where they are and where they are with their time and so forth. But also I'm enriching and deepening that learning. So those of you out there who are teaching something to your audience, thinking about the experience they're having while listening to your podcast or your course or your workshop, that right there solidified it for me because now I had the academic research and I had the research on teaching and learning to show the power of audio. It wasn't just about building my list or whatever. It wasn't just about marketing. That's another piece of this, of course. But the learning piece was what I needed to say, okay, now I'm ready to step into this space. So that's just my quick overview of the teaching side of this. I freaking love it. I'm sitting here nodding. So a couple (laughs) things. I love it. This is like a research paper, obviously. (laughs) So UDL I've heard of, and that was something that it's funny. I didn't know of UDL until I left teaching. And I don't, you've been in education for a long time, Barbie. Is it something that And you said within the last four years, it's really exploded. Was it something that people were using 10 or 15 years ago and it became a thing? Or is it a relatively new thing that people are working on or thinking about when they think about education? It's interesting because in education as a whole, One of our biggest missions is just reaching our learners. So not all learners have the opportunity to sit down at a video and watch a video for half an hour and take notes and they're in a quiet space and all these things. We don't have that opportunity. Some are athletes learn traveling across the country and they need to listen to a podcast because they're headed to a game. Or you have a parent who has four kids and she's come back to school. And it's like, so when we start thinking about that, it's like, okay, how can we reach our learners? And so you're right. The the Mm -hmm. research certainly was 15 years ago. Go. The actual implementation and the technology to put it in the hands of the professors, yeah. that has just been recent. So I guess we're sure. kind of writing both lines here. It just took a while for us to be able to do that because even transcriptions, I did my virtual conference back in 2020 and I had to have real transcribers, real people transcribe for me because there was no automatic button to hit closed captioning. I spent thousands of dollars on that and that was four years ago. <laughs> so, I mean, that's how fast things change. So that's a really good question. But yeah, we, we've always known it. We just haven't had the ability to do it well like we do now. It's interesting because my life lining up with where I am now versus where I was 10 years ago, I always knew that education wasn't serving me. I was in a community college. So non-traditional learners were like a main centerpiece. My dissertation was on community college learning. And as you say this, like a parent, the single mom, the, the adult returning to school, all those folks were in my classroom. And to know that now I am where I am it's like, I didn't know that I was building something that would almost solve a problem was that something that I cared about for a long time. And it's really cool to know that 
all of that set me up to build this and know that it was a good thing that I was building and something that should totally be in a college experience. I'm going to leave this call and be like, Nora, we're going, <laughs> we're going into the universe. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do want to take this out of education because I know we don't have a lot of audience. But I, I, I do just want to say that I see, and I know that you can see, you can take the lessons that we're learning by teaching in the college classroom, or in my case, teaching faculty, Mm -hmm. Those totally translate to any learners that your audience has. So if you're working with business owners, if you're working with women, if you're working returning, returning professionals, whatever that is, if you're working with parents, the research and the approaches still apply. And so that's just what I wanted to put out there because I haven't heard that on the show yet. And I'm like, look, there's more to this than the marketing. <laughs> it's the teaching. <laughs> oh, 100%. I'll say this too, Nora and I both attract the type of person who's probably curious about how to make their courses better, how to make their content more accessible. So while it may seem like we're nerding out a little bit and getting a little jargony, the reality is the type of people that <laughs> follow me and Nora or are a part of my world love this kind of stuff. And I, I do think there's not a, a ton of people. It's more popular now than when I first was in the space about how to make courses better. So I'll say you can get as nerdy as you want in education. This is the space to do it. And I think our audience likes that kind of stuff, or at least I like to think that because I like to talk about it. So maybe not, maybe no. Well, and I think that's, yeah, a piece either that, way. that's a piece that's missing in a lot of these these courses is like, and that's what your work did. And that's what many people just miss the fact that, wait a minute, you're teaching to people like they need to learn. It's not just about the information, but there's a way to make it so they can engage. And so uh, getting back to the audio piece, that's the piece, uh, like I say, I needed it and my audience has needed to make sure that the research behind it, behind the audio as a platform, as a teaching and learning approach matters. And if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be able to reach this audience. So I needed that piece. And the connection for me was UDL and embodied learning. And that when I, when I put those together, I was like, I got it. This is it. So if you want to hear about the way I'm using Hello Audio, I could totally do that or whatever you want to talk about next. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I love it. First of all, I love the language of audio as a platform. That's a really cool way of saying that. Yeah. Why don't we hear a little bit about how it's in your business? And then we can kind of talk about some of the pieces that you bring up. Okay, so I have three different ways that I'm kind of growing into Hello Audio. And I feel like I have so much to learn and I'm trying to keep up with all the amazing things that you're all doing. And number one is it's so easy. I am so overwhelmed with making videos and PowerPoint slides and all the things. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I can just hit record and go. And so let me just say that thank you for making something super easy. So I've used it in three different ways. The first way that I started to use this was with a client. So I, so in my case, a client is usually a department. So a department comes to me. In this case, it was a math department. And they were like, hey, we want to make our classes more effective and engaging. We want to do a workshop. So I put together a series of video modules for them and I made it really cool where they had, they could choose, they all completed the first three and then they could choose their own adventure and choose from the other seven based on what they were interested in. So there were 10 modules that they had. And this was the first time I really did that. And I'm like, well, okay, let's try something new. So I mentioned to them, hey, I'm going to just strip out the audio from these videos that I've made for you. I'm going to turn it into a private podcast just for you. It's not available on any platforms. It's not, it's not out there. You can't search it. So I wanted to bring down the fear that they were thinking they were paying for something custom and it was going out to the world. So I eliminated that fear. And I'm like, okay, so this is, I'm not going to charge you extra. I just want to experiment. I want to get your feedback. Very low low barrier to entry. <laughs> and so I did that. There were 30 faculty members and they were all professors. And this was in the state of Washington. All right. And that's going to matter in just a moment. So what I did was I put it out there and I was like, Hey, here's your podcast. Here's your links. Listen whenever you want to. Well, the feedback came in and I would say that half of the faculty only listened to the podcast episode, didn't even go to the videos. Some of them still needed that video. But then I had one woman who sent me this email and she said, Barbie, she says, thank you so much for a, a podcast platform, like a podcast experience, because for the first time in four weeks, it is not raining in Washington state and it's not cloudy. It's beautiful. It's sunshine. And I just wanted to be outside. I did not want to sit behind my computer. So I went out to my garden. I put in my headphones and I listened to my workshop and she was like, thank you so much. And to me, that was 
perfect. That's exactly what I want to try to do. And I know for many people, we think about our audience and where they are and and she wouldn't have had that opportunity. So I just wanted to share that little story because it was really transformative and it made me think, you know what? Faculty do need to get out from their offices and their campuses and go do the things they love uh, while still learning. Yeah, we all do. Uh, I mean, for sure, that that's a that's a big thing. And I think being able to meet people where they are, they are and integrate into their daily lives is is key. I mean, you said it right a few minutes ago. It's all about reach. This allows you to reach people in a way that videos don't necessarily do that. And I think that being able to unlock all the hours of the day when we're not sitting at the screen or when we don't even want to be sitting at the screen, and it gives us the ability to do these other things, I think is, is really key. So I think that's really awesome. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I just loved that story. And I've held on to that story as I've created more, more things, more audio things. So I know you have two other ways, but I have a question about, and I think this will serve a lot of people. What was it like talking with people who don't know what a private podcast is about? I mean, you kind of hinted at it's not going to be public, like it's just for you. Any other feedback or thoughts in the way you communicate with folks who maybe have never come across even that idea? I did it in the air quotes safety of a client I was already working with who came to me and said, we want this custom experience, which was these 10 modules, but faculty complete five. I, I did my normal spill. And then I was just like, here's an additional way to learn. And I did couch it in terms of, hey, we're practicing what we preach around here, which is UDL. We're looking at lots of ways to learn. So when I can attach the approach to the research and the evidence, because my audience needs that, then I've got them. And so for me, that was a way for me to do that because one of the modules was about accessibility and inclusion and diversity. And I'm like, here we go. This is, I'm going to show you what this could look like for you. And we even talked about, could they do an audio lecture? And what would that mean? And how could they flip their classes with audio instead of video? So it became the private podcast language wasn't necessarily the main focus. It was more for me, here's another way for you to reach your students. I'm reaching you here. So that's how I couched it and kind of put it in that space. But I think it's just knowing what your market or your audience, what's their language so that you can then speak to that. So I've been playing around and I overthink so many things. I've been playing around with, should I call it audio courses? Should I call it private podcasts? Should I call it audio workshops? I don't know yet because the language isn't there yet. We're ahead of the game, right? We, we don't really know, know what to call it yet. So, so I think my piece of advice is knowing your, your market and trying to figure out what language resonates with them and then making it safe. Like I say, I had to make sure they knew that they are paying me thousands of dollars to do this for them. And no, this is not going to be on Spotify, right? This is not going to be out in the world. So I guess that's some tips, advice. Super helpful. Okay. So if you want to dive into some of the other ways, but I, I love that story. Yeah. Okay. So that was my test case to see how I can use Hello Audio. Now I'm all in. So in 2020, I launched a virtual conference for the first time and I've run that conference every year and it usually brings in between 180 and 300 professors from all over the world. And I do 10 sessions at the time when I started this, it was all video. All right. So we did 10 video sessions and I'm like, all right, I'm stripping out this audio. I'm going to stick in a private podcast for you. Those of you who don't have time to sit behind your computer. This is the audio version of this conference and people loved it. So I would say the first two years, just with an average of 280 faculty members attending at any given time on every single session, I would have between 100 and 150 live attendees, which was amazing to me. But then when I looked at the downloads for the audio, I would say at least half of the people, so 150-ish people, had accessed every single one of those. So you're talking about 150 people for session one, session two, session three. That's a lot. <laughs> and I was so excited and I got a lot of really good feedback that's like, thank you for offering this because I couldn't attend live. So they had, a lot again, illustrating here's your video here's your recording of the video but here's your audio and here's your transcript all these different ways for you to learn they did great my conference has been my most successful financial as well as business growth opportunity that I've done and I, I credit that also to to hello audio because I'm able to get that information out there quickly I mean within 24 hours I had all 10 episodes uploaded and ready and promoted and, and everything it was super easy 
I love that. So, okay, we've gone through two of the ways. Now I'm I'm dying to know. I mean, you you I want to know what the third way is, and then we're going to dive in probably with some additional questions. All right. So the third way, again, there's so many ways to use Hello Audio, right? So the third way is what I've just started, which is what I'm calling audio courses. I'm playing with the language. Should I call them audio workshops? I went into the Hello Audio Facebook group to ask, what's the terminology here? What are you all saying to your audience? And so I'm experimenting right now with the words audio courses because my audience is academic and they're familiar with that language. However, I think course sounds very heavy to academics. So I'm thinking maybe I should do audio workshop. I don't know yet. But anyway, I have created my first one, which is called the business of academic speaking. So this one actually steps out of professors worlds and saying, hey, if you want to be a speaker who reaches academic audiences, so you may have some listeners who are interested in this. How do you get into speaking? in higher education, because we have all the gates. (laughs) We have so many walls that you have to jump over and hoops to jump through, and you just cannot get in unless you're already in. And so this course takes you through that. So I have five modules in there, and I put a workbook with it. So I did a digital workbook that follows along step by step. And I've noticed that something that could be a selling point for people out there is The podcast is usually random conversations that just kind of happen as you have guests or as you have an idea or there's something new in the market, let's talk about it. Whereas with Hello Audio, I was able to create a structured learning experience. Here's module one, here's module two, here's module three. And I think that matters when you're taking a client through a step-by-step process. And I love that. And I think there's some potential here. I Let's see, that when I launched my first one, we're recording this in October. I launched it and I ran a special for just one week and sold five courses at a two ninety seven type of price range. And for me, that was exactly what I needed just to get a little feedback. So that's where I'm headed next. <laughs> oh, I love it. And have you gotten feedback from the folks that bought the audio workshop or audio course? And have they said anything? Yeah. So, so far the feedback as they listen. So I I offered this first sort of beta pilot group. I offered them a a free complimentary one-on-one call with me for 20 minutes because I needed to hear from them to see where we are. They're not quite ready for that yet because we literally just launched this. But the feedback from emails is just like, I really like how this is very structured. It's very focused. I think that's a big word is it's focused. And they like the the workbook that goes with them. Like I say, that guided step-by-step piece, which is very different than most podcasts out there. And I think that might be a good selling point for people who are thinking like, how do I pitch this to my audience. And that might be one if you have something very complicated to share. But but yeah, they like it. They, they like uh, the stories. They like the real examples that I'm providing. They like listening whenever, <laughs> whether it's driving or working out or doing dishes. So yeah, that feedback has been really good. I love it. It's so interesting the way you're talking about it too. You're like, And I I think this makes sense for a mainstream general population. It's like, how you like to listen to podcasts and you learn things, right? We, but it's very unstructured and you don't know if you're going to learn something (laughs) or you do a show that that's their, that's their angle. Like my husband really likes ologies. That's a great show where you can literally learn about stuff and it's set up that way. But what you're saying is, yeah, so you know how there's podcasts and you like listening and learning, but you're not really doing it in a shark. Here's this audio course. And so you're really kind of starting them with what they already know, which is funny because if you look back in time, audio courses aren't new. Like my grandma, when I was telling her what I was doing, she was like, oh yeah, I learned how to become a real estate agent on tape, right? It's not a new thing, but It is when the world is so focused on video, the pendulum went that way. And it's like, let's go back to this other possibility. And what I'm noticing too, in the first two ways that you um, are using it right now, about half for both of them preferred the audio. That's huge. When you think about it from a learning perspective, for those of you in a classroom, if you know that you're not reaching a certain amount of of the population, and it it can be as high as 50% in some cases or more, that they're never logging in or they're watching one thing and leaving, 
just think about what if I just the same material, right? Just the file exported. <laughs> and now I've added that many more people. I've helped that many more, more people come in contact just because of the medium. You didn't even have to do anything different or fancy. And I think that's a big takeaway I'm hearing as you talk about the ways that you use this is about half of the people really clearly preferred the audio version. And that's huge. That's huge. And I know there's different disciplines and topics and people have different businesses that need a visual, but man, if you can figure out how to talk about what's on that visual and that's that UDL piece coming mm. in, if you can explain that in an audio platform, I mean, your students, your learners, your clients, whoever they are can go anywhere and keep learning. They can re-listen as many times as they want to. And so I just love that. And I will say this, that I love playing with new tech, but I do get intimidated. And I was not intimidated with Hello Audio because I took what I had already recorded, 10 modules for a client. I took that and I said, huh, Okay, they said I can just literally hit this button and it's going to take out my audio and put it in here for me. And when I hit that button, the magic happened and I was like, oh my goodness. And it was done. And that right there made me a client for life. I was like, right, that, that was it. It was just so easy. No other platform had I used and I've used two dozen platforms for things. Nothing else was that easy. So thank you. <laughs> ah, I love that. We know that moment. And that's what we try to focus on as a company too, of just blowing people away with that. I think people need to record that moment when they do it the first time and you need to have the reaction video. <laughs> Maybe that's it. That might be a good social, social audio <laughs> experiment. Yeah. <laughs> So you mentioned the UDL piece and you mentioned you name drop somebody. I'm curious if someone listening is like, and maybe we'll have you on and we'll do a workshop style or something, but that is a special skill of being able to describe what's on a PowerPoint or what visuals you're showing. Are there any resources off the top of your head that you can think of that we could point people to? Yeah, the, the person I recommend is a, a colleague and a friend. His name is Thomas Tobin, T-O-B-I-N. And if, we do, if you do show notes and so forth, I can definitely point in that direction. He's been on my show twice to talk about literally UDL, like all the different ways your learners can show what they know and, and learn. And he brings the research, but he also brings just like the practical way to do this. And so he would be fantastic for helping people describe complex information or diagrams from a slide and make that audio. He's my go-to when it comes to all things universal design for learning. And and it's not just about, I, I think there's been a stigma around, oh, well, that must mean it's for learners who have disabilities or limitations. And it is not. And he is changing the conversation. Him and his colleagues are changing the conversation. It's not about that. All of us benefit from an audio format or a written format or a video. We all need all different ways to interact. So I listened to a ton of podcasts when my son was just born and had those long nights where you're rocking them because they won't go to sleep. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to listen to this podcast. It was just the platform that I needed at that time. So you just never know uh, what your learners need. And so I do recommend his work. I'm happy to make that connection if anybody wants more. Great, Barbie. Yeah, I totally agree. As a mom myself, <laughs> when you can squeeze in those moments, I personally chose Grey's Anatomy when I was breastfeeding. <laughs> but either way, that was just the time of my life I was in. Either way, I would love to hear a little bit about, yeah, the impact that this has had on your business. What kind of results or choices or decisions that you're making now with your work and with your platform? My public podcast gave me the step into this world of audio and really getting my message beyond my cheerleaders, right? Reaching new audiences. But then now it's just like some of your guests have said before, you don't know who those listeners are. You can't track them in any way and you can't follow up with them in any way. And so I have created a Facebook group and things like that, but I don't know if they're subscribed to my list or not. And so what I love is in Hello Audio, now I'm just starting to get into how am I connecting this to my list? Is it using it to help me grow? I'm just starting to, to leverage the power of Hello Audio for that. And so I don't have numbers to share in terms of that kind of growth, but what I can share is that it seems like my audience is really gravitating towards the ease and the format. So like, oh, okay, I can just plug it in and go. And also, oh, I like the way that Barbie is breaking mm. this down, or I like the way that we're doing faculty development in a very different way. And that's one thing in, in my field, in my industry, it is very traditional in terms of, it was, a, it was hard to move to virtual. 
because my audience is very much let's show up and let's do a workshop in person and then we all go about our business. But of course, 2020 moved us all out of that. And now I think we're ready for even more. And I think that faculty have gotten a taste of the fact that, hey, you know what? I can learn anyway, anywhere, anyhow. I like this podcast platform. So I'm seeing the growth in terms of subscribers. My list is growing. But for me, I think I'm measuring it in terms of my workload and productivity, which has both gone through the roof. I can just hit a button and record And I can get a course out or a workshop out super quick when it used to take me months to get the videos and the slides and the transcripts and the handouts and all the things. So I guess I can look at it more like it's a success for my productivity and efficiency as a busy mom and business owner and educator, scholar, all these things. So I don't know if that totally answers the questions. I will say, though, that my most successful thing is my virtual conference and that right there showed me that people want more than just video and they keep coming back every year. So, and half the audience listen to, to the audio version. So to me that I think I've got potential there. I love that. Yeah. It's the win-win, right? I mean, it's easy for the creator and it's easy for the listener, whoever that listener is, right? Student, business professional. It, I think that's, that's kind of the, the best of both worlds, which is awesome. So obviously, Barbie, you're a trailblazer, I think, in the education field with thinking about this kind of stuff. If you had advice for people who are like, this private podcast thing, I'm kind of curious, or maybe they're questioning how good they are with tech, whatever it is, what kind of advice would you have to somebody who's starting to think about how they can incorporate audio into their business or their work life? First of all, I'm going to share what all your other guests have shared, which is start with what you already have, (laughs) right? So I started with, I was literally getting paid from a client to create videos and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm already getting paid for this thing. I'm going to go ahead and try this too. So it's almost like I got paid to pilot test it. So if you can do it with an existing client and offer the alternative and just say, hey, what do you think about this? I think that's a really safe place to do it in terms of yourself, trying something new, but also for your client who's like, uh, I, don't, I don't understand. <laughs> so that to me was really easy when I was able to kind of test in a safe place. And then I guess my second one would be just advice for podcasters in general is share stories. And just remember you have an edit button, <laughs> which is great for pod. It is so easy to edit a podcast and it is so hard to edit a video. <laughs> so oh, I think- So true. Yeah. Take the pressure off yourself and say, you know what? I'm just going to go. I'm going to talk and I can always cut this part out. It's okay. Nobody sees me. It's okay. And then my last one, I think just goes to the spirit of, of my work, which is in academia, we I talk about breaking up lectures. So here I'm just going to say, break up your work, whatever it is you're going to offer, whether that's your, your podcast or a, a course or a workshop or a seminar or whatever that is to break it up and try not to talk at your audience for more than 30 minutes and then break that up. And it's so easy to do that with Hello Audio because you can literally just record it and then upload it and then move to the next one so easily. It's seamless. So I think those are my three big takeaways for for your listeners. Those are good ones. I love the reinforcing of what everyone says because it's true. It's like, if you've heard this again, (laughs) you out there who's like, oh shoot, I think it's me. (laughs) I love it. I see the potential for transforming faculty development, which is, that is, teaching professors how to teach. Oh, that needs to be transformed. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Because we're the worst students, right? And I love that we can provide, yeah, another way of learning. And you're like, you don't have to sit in front of a computer. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's relevant to everyone listening. It's just rethinking and looking for that opportunity to say, you know what, let me just try this as as a little audio series. And one of the biggest decisions that I made in my public podcast was to move away from weekly into a seasonal Um, Because I was going insane, literally just going crazy, trying to get an episode out every single week. And I'm like, what am I doing? So after 100 episodes, I switched it to seasonal and my audience loved it. They were like, oh my gosh, Barbie, I felt like Mm. I was falling behind. And so with Hello Audio, you can go in and you can make seasons or themes or focuses. And I'm like, oh, I see so much potential here. And my audience wants that. Then they don't feel like they're getting behind every week and they have to skip episodes. They can just binge listen or binge watch or whatever. And they can focus on the thing that they're most interested in and then they can move on and they don't feel like they have to keep up every week. So I am stepping into that. This is still very new to me, that part of this uh, work, but I think that's where I'm headed next is, is really thinking through these sort of exclusive, private, limited series type podcasts. I'm still playing with the language, but something like that. 
I love that as an option, right? I think that's, and I, I think you hit on something really important that I want to emphasize, and that's that feeling of feeling behind that a lot of people have, whether you're a student, whether you are a business owner, whether you're a marketer, and there are a lot of marketers that will prey on that feeling of feeling behind, by the way, that's also how they like to sell things. But I, I love that audio allows the freedom to be able to listen at your convenience. It does open that up and it, it'll, it'll help eliminate that feeling that can really be an impediment to getting whatever result is on the end of that, whether it's passing a, a course or whether it's completing an assignment or launching a new product or service. I think that's, that's a really important feeling that I think a lot of us that really care about our, our listeners or our students or our, our clients or customers, I think audio really helps alleviate that, that feeling or that fear of being behind, which I think is really important. Yes, absolutely. And I know I get that way. I get frustrated. I'm like, oh my gosh, I've missed five videos or five episodes and it's just overwhelming. So I think that focused attention, shorter, bite size, micro, whatever you want to call that. There's so many words for, for this, but I think that is the future of, in my world of faculty development, but I could see it across lots of different industries and, and disciplines and just a lot of potential there. Yeah. I think that feeling of overwhelm comes from the idea that we already don't have enough time. And then when you, for whatever happens, something major happens in your life and you're not commuting the same way. So you're not listening to that show or whatever. And then all of a sudden you have five hours of content. I don't have five hours. And that that's the feeling. And the next one's coming out and it's still coming. That doesn't feel good. But binging, what's different is it's the same amount of hours, right? But it's now in the learner's hands to it's on demand, more or less. It's like now I have, I do have five hours because I decided to, I don't know, redo my deck and I put in my headphones and whatever. And so there's that, I think it's like learner and like sense of control, adult learners specifically. And I think professors are busy. So the idea of professional development and having to go that day and fine, it's on the calendar and I can set my time aside. But then there was always hanging over your head the hours you had to complete over a given semester. And you're like, stuff got piled up and you're now still owed hours by the end of the year. And you're just like, ah, where am I going to get them? This kind of stuff makes it so much easier for people and really gives them control. And I think that's like the piece that, I don't know, because the overwhelm is put on by us, right? It's in our own heads. It's not real, but that, that control piece, if we give that back, you're empowering the folks, your customers, your learners, your clients, and empowerment is a big part of this. And that's, and that's huge. All right, we get to the, are we doing the final question? This is always the most fun question of every, every one of these case study episodes. And that is, if there was a private podcast with your life's ramblings, what would it be called? Okay, I'm totally wearing the shirt today. That would be the title of my podcast for this. And it's called, hang on, let me overthink this. <laughs> so, I love that. There has never been a motto <laughs> that fits me more. <laughs> So my podcast would have something to do with overthinking. It can be overthinking anonymous or hang on. I'm really Bring me a question you have. Oh, that's a good it, one. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, but our overthinkers anonymous, maybe we all need help with that. So I don't know, but yeah, you could probably hear even from this episode. I'm like, what should I call it? Should it be a podcast? Should it be a course? Should it be oh, a workshop? Good. Should it be a webinar? Like I overthink it all. So <laughs> it would be something like that. <laughs> Yep. You are in very good company. Yep. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> You're in good company. I think Nora and I are the same. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Barbie, well, this has been so much fun. I knew it would be. I always love talking about education. It always reminds me how much I miss it and also am happy to have left it behind. <laughs> it's a mixed bag, but for folks that are still half in, half out, doing the good work, appreciate you and so glad that you took the plunge with Hello Audio. And I think professors and the education system is really going to benefit from you and this, yeah, audio as a, what do we call it? Audio as a platform. That's, I'm going to take that if you don't mind. <laughs> Borrow, I should say, and cite appropriately. <laughs> <laughs> Not, well, that's what it is, right? That's a platform. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm a huge fan, huge supporter, and I'm happy to talk to others about just the different types of ways that I'm using Hello Audio, and I'm, I'm still thinking of new ways. So thank you for providing something that is very flexible, um, is very easy, it's not intimidating, and you're always 
adding something new. So I'm always thinking, oh, what's the next thing that you're going to come out with? So thank you for being innovative and supportive as well. Awesome. We appreciate you. And yes, folks can connect with you in the show notes. Reach out to Barbie, give a shout, say hello. Yes. Thank you so much for coming. Awesome. Thank you. And there you have it, audio heads. Another episode of Laundry Private Podcast is in the books. I hope you're leaving today feeling even more ready to amplify your voice and connect with your audience in meaningful ways. The adventure continues in our next episode with even more insights, strategies, and inspiration to help you along your own private podcasting journey. Of course, make sure to check out helloaudio.fm to start your own private podcast. And remember, you've got amazing content that needs to be heard. So let's turn the volume up. Until next time.